Hello and welcome, dear guests, dear Toastmasters. Today is first day, the 21st of May 2020. And we are now live streaming from Malta, Malta, a small island in a Mediterranean, I call it sea, with very amazing strategy, how you can grow your membership in a no matter of time um, from zero to 100, I'd say. <laughs> Myself, my name is Mateusz Podgorski and what happened actually last year when I became president, I said to my vice president of membership, Marco, who is going to lead our presentation, Marco, I would like to have 60 members by the year 2020 in June, in June 2020. How can we achieve that? And we were brainstorming about different strategies and uh, we managed actually with our strategy to get 42 members, we, meaning we doubled our membership in March before COVID started. So, and we probably, we would definitely would reach by 60 by, by now, but unfortunately it was not possible. But still our system that we created, a system which is scalable and also works uh, and also can be easily transferred and transmitted. Today's workshop is called Gusta. Let me show. I have it here. The name of today's workshop is Gusta Ship. How master the secret of membership growth? And I would like to welcome to our stage Marco Ambrosio, the master of our Gusta Ship, who was sailing before everywhere in the Mediterranean Ocean, but then finally found a destination with this strategy of growing the membership and doubling it this year for Toastmasters of Malta. Please give me a warm applause to Marco to welcome you here on the stage. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for the introduction and uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, as Matt said, we are connecting from Malta throughout Europe. You are all welcome. And uh, I'm going to uh, start right away with the presentation. Just before we begin, uh, two information. Uh, I'm going to do a presentation uh, of about 20 minutes. Uh, I will share my screen. After that, we will open the, we'll open the table for questions. So we'll have a Q&A session. Uh, in the meantime, while I do the presentation uh, with me, there is uh, Yolanta Schubert from our club, our new VPM, just elected two days ago. And she will be taking uh, the questions, if you have something to ask, you can just uh, write it on the, on, the, um, on the chat and she will then collect all the questions and then we, will, we can use that tool after the presentation is over. Uh, so without further ado, I will just share my screen. If you bear with me for a few seconds, this should work. Okay, uh, please, uh, Zoom Masters, can you confirm you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen clearly. Okay, very good, very good. So, um, we call it guestership, how to master the secret of membership growth. My name again is Mark Ambrogio. I am the VPM at Toastmasters Malta for 2019-2020. So soon my uh, uh, time, my tenure will be over. And uh, I'm going to talk to you tonight a bit about what we did, what works, what didn't work. And hopefully you will have some ideas, some options. Maybe you will learn something new or we'll just have some different point of view. Um, let me see if this works. Uh, what, do, what I do, I am a strategic advisor. I do strategic advisory in business development and public speaking. My superpowers are creating systems, connecting people and cooking. Uh, so up to you which superpowers you like the most. You can contact me after for any of them. <laughs> This is a picture of Valletta, our capital city of this little small island uh, that you see. For those of you who are familiar with Valletta, for those who aren't, I just wanted to share it here and give you some few information about our club and about the country of Malta. Our club was established in 2010. This year is 10 years, actually, anniversary. We are the only Toastmasters club in Malta. At the moment, we are currently undistricted and uh, our best ever member count was 35 in 2015, 2016. It has declined since then. And the member count in July, 2019, that's about a year ago, was 22. 
to give you some comparison, the population of Malta is made of 500,000 people roughly, of whom actually 20% are foreign residents. There are a number of international company located here in Malta. There are a number of company in online gaming and other online activity. Therefore, there is a wide crowd of people from around the world with different languages who live here permanently all through the year, including a number of tourists in visiting the island. This is a picture of our club in one of our events. Actually, this was last fall, I think it was October 2019, if I remember well. And this is a little uh, 30 second video to show you what we do to try to boost our presence and our, uh, our, the awareness of the community in Malta about those masters. Because one challenge we have here in Malta is that there are so many events all through the years, all the time, sometimes several events, events in the same day, that people are, are a spoiled for choice and sometimes they are distracted. So it's very important to create awareness about the club, the community, and what we do to be able to spread the word of Toastmasters. I hope, oh, sorry, uh, I did this, I have to go back. Excuse me for a second. I press the wrong button. I should be here. Okay, this should start now. Very good. This is just a uh, just an explanation. This is a, a short video that was done by our VP PR team, and was posted on our Facebook uh, uh, channel and uh, LinkedIn and Instagram to basically present uh, a modern view about our club and what we do, and present a call for action at the end, which is reserve your spot and join us as a guest. Okay, back to the next. Uh, sorry. Okay, next slide. Very good. Just a short disclaimer. We are going to talk about tools, software, brands, which are included in the presentation. We are not affiliated to any of them. We are not promoting any of the software. We do not recommend to use any of the software or the brand we talked about. Only you know what is best for your club and the decision to use any of the tools is entirely up to you. This was what happened when Matt told me 60 by 06, 60 by June. I try to scribble something with different color, try to come up with an idea because I went from, okay, you have to be VPM, a short, uh, a short effort you have to do every week to find out a plan to support the vision of our president. From this, we evolved into a pirate big har, <laughs> which stands for, actually is a famous marketing tool that stands for acquisition, activation, retention, revenue and referral. Uh, as I said, I'm not going into details. You will get the full presentation as a PDF after, the, after this event, so you don't have to start looking into that. This was just something we wanted to start with because we didn't know what to do first, so we tried to create a plan based on the vision. And of course, as the VPN, what we work through, and this is the next slide, is actually the retention and the revenue, meaning making sure that guests who comes to our club for the first time, they get engaged with the club. Possibly they come again another time or more. They want to have more information with the goal of converting them to a member. And this is what my presentation is focusing about tonight. We study our club data, which said that about 18% are called the senators, meaning they have been with the club for three years or more. We also have a very high dropout rate after the first year, 67%. This is actually quite normal for Malta. As I said, a lot of people are foreigners. They come here on work assignment. They might stay for six months, one year, 18 months. They come and they go. So it's actually expected and we cannot really do much about that number. Plus also not being restricted poses another challenge because when a member become uh, expert or he finish a pathways, there are many opportunities 
for a senior member to develop throughout the club structure. So for us, a guest is a potential member who saw something without being sure of what it is. Yet the guest made the decision of attending one meeting. And that's all how it starts. What are we going to do about it? Our pledge was to honor the guest with outstanding hospitality. We wanted to have a system that was fully GDPR compliant. We wanted to respect their time with a stellar follow-up and we do not want to sell the membership. No sales tactics allowed, no pressure selling. We give the, best, the guest the best opportunity to see the club and then we let the magic of Toastmasters do the rest. Basically, we just want to present our best case and then we let the guest decide if it's for him or her or it's not. We created this, again, it's small, you don't have to look at it, it's a mind mapping. We try to come up with a system in seven steps, sort of seven interaction points, which we went on to define and I'm going to talk into details. We don't have to look right now at all the specification, just to let you know the first interaction, it's a meeting because that's a commitment. We don't count if someone writes on Facebook, they're going to come for a meeting. This is part of VPPR, it's not VP, VP membership. We only start evaluating when a member, a person comes for the first time as a guest through the door or joins a Zoom online meeting because at the moment we are not holding live meeting as usual, even if we hope soon to come back to that. Where does this fit? These systems is something in between lead generation and lead management. Actually, the leads, if you're familiar with the terminology, is something that comes throughout your marketing and PR. But once a lead step out, step into the door of the club, then it's become what we call it a hot lead, a qualified lead. And then we have to manage it well to make sure that we can convert some of the, some of the member, some of the guests into members. As I said before, if something is not clear, post your question in the chat and then we're going to answer as many of them as possible or I will follow up after with an email after today's presentation. This, we went on to, decide, uh, to, to define what happened at the meeting. This was basically mapping the guest journey. What happened to a guest the first time comes to a Toastmasters meeting? How we do the welcome? Uh, where do we welcome the guest? Uh, we ask them to sign the guest book. The guest book has to be GDPR compliant. Then we do a quick chat, we introduce ourselves. And then what we do, we present the guest to another member. And we have involved throughout a, a, a number of uh, uh, ways, all our members, because we say, welcoming a guest is actually a club effort. It's not just the VPN effort, because when someone is new, Let's say you're going to a party with a friend. This friend doesn't know anyone. What are you going to do? You're going to introduce your friend to as many people as possible because in that way, he will have the best opportunity to talk with different people, get different opinion, different point of view, and feel for himself if that is a fit for him or not. And this is actually very important and it's an activity that we are really promoting and really asking all the members to be really active to welcome guests, interact, and this doesn't mean selling the club, telling how much it costs the membership, what is pathways, forget about all this. If you are new to something, you don't wanna get your head bombarded with a lot of information. You just want to see if there is a friendly face, if there is someone you know, if you like the speaker, if you like the room, many things that has nothing to do with complicated processing of information, which anyway, when it's the first time of something new, you cannot do, nobody can. After this, uh, actually, as I said, we never talked about the cost, the price of membership. We never go into details, never, never, ever explain pathways because we all know, at least that's what I believe, how great pathway is, which is really a tool that is worth a lot, but you cannot explain pathway to a guest who doesn't know anything about Toastmasters in five minutes. It's not possible. After that, which we call it the T1, the first visit, the touch one, we went out to map another six interaction with the guest. And we had to find a way that was comfortable for the guest. It wasn't invasive of privacy and which was accepted 
not formal, but just also not too easy going. So what we agreed to do was to use the email. And that's what we asked the guests to give her their name, their email address, possibly the correct one, and the authorization to contact them with updates about the club. And we use a system that when the guest receive an email, if he doesn't like it, you just click unsubscribe and that's it. So we don't bother them anymore. We, uh, at the beginning, I was really wondering about what to do. And as I always get very creative and I try to use software and automation and application, I was having a lot of ideas. And then one evening I was having a meeting with one of our member and he told me, he listened to me, and I tell you, it was a very noisy environment because we were all listening to some jazz music in a banda club uh, near Valletta. And he was listening to me, probably he understood 20% of what I said. But then he told me, listen, whatever you do, don't go crazy with online solution. Just do everything manual. Just as you are a guest and you have to interact with the guest manual. Write everything down map the guest journey, see what happened. And then from there, when you understand where the value is and where you can really make the difference, then start building an automatic system. And this is how we define that in the short term, everything I will have to do manual with the goal of going towards automation as much as possible. This is the bar where we had actually the meeting. You can see there is a nice uh, jazz club, uh, jazz band playing. It's super loud, actually extremely loud. At the back, you don't see there is a very, very busy road going into Valletta with cars or honking all the time and noisy, noisy motorbikes. So anyway, I think that's what he told me. I'm not sure that's what my friend Lonnie told me, but that's what I did and it worked. So thank you, Lonnie. Uh, uh, and uh, it was a great, a great advice from you. So what we did was exactly that. We started using different tools. The first, we went manual. What are the pro? Of course, it's free. It's a good way to learn what's going on and there's no setup, no, nothing to learn. The cons, well, it's time consuming, it's non-scalable and it's really non-GDPR compliant all the way. Then we went to start using Gmail, which is a step forward. It's still free. It gives some automation and it's easy to set up. We all know how to use it. But again, it's time consuming. When you have a number of guests, you have to know with our club, we started building up uh, a guest income of from five to six to eight to nine to 10 to 12 to up to 15 guests per night, meaning 15 emails, follow-ups is not easy. And in fact, it's not easy to scale and it's not completely GDPR compliant because if a guest doesn't like receiving the emails, he can block us, which is not good because then our Gmail gets, gets uh, blocked or he has to reply to us and ask us not to actually send more emails, which is not really friendly. Because as I said before, we are all facing very high level competition. People expect everything to be perfect, quick, one, two, three, up level, easy, friendly, mobile. And we have to actually uh, get to that level. Then we use Easy Speak, which again, it's free. It's GDPR compliant, which is a great tool. It is scalable and it is time saving. On the, on the room for improvement, as we say, uh, maybe the user interface and the user experience are not ideal. It does require the guest action to register, to receive an email. Sometimes you go into the spam filter, so we have to tell them what to do. In the end, it's not easy for the guest to use it. And then we started playing around until we decide to use MailChimp, which again, it's a, it's a tool which is, um, which is great for automation, it's GDPR compliant, it's scalable, and it is very much time saving. Uh, of course, it's not free, even though it's not that expensive, but again, it's not free, and that has to be pointed out. And it does require to learn a new tool, again, which we see and we have to admit it is on the uh, con, con site. What tools shall we use? Again, as I said, map your system first. Understand what you do. Understand what are your bottlenecks, what are your pain points, and what would you like to improve? So map anything you do first before doing anything. How do you map it? The way you want. You can write it down in a word file. You can write it down by hand. You can create a mind mapping. Uh, you can do brainstorming. 
whatever is the easiest and the way you feel comfortable doing it. And then do everything manually to begin with. Find, as I said, your pain points, try before committing, test softwares. We try different softwares. We try Trello, we try MailChimp, we try other automation uh, until we, we came to decide to use that one. And then remember, execution is king. Whatever you do, you need to test it and repeat it for a number, uh, uh, for, a, for a period of time until you can assess the results and see if it's working or not. If you just give up too early, you don't even get to the point where you can see if something is working for real or not. Now I'm gonna share with you some few tips. The first one, and this is the best kept secret, it's not free for guests to attend. Forget the word free. Because what is the value of free? If, we, if you get something for free, it worth nothing. We say instead that the guest can attend twice on us. You are welcome, but be aware, attending a club meeting, it costs five euros a donation, which we're not charging for the first two times. But after two times for free, we will send you a nice email to let you know that you have been a guest twice already. And if you want to come again, you're very welcome, but there will be this donation. Just by letting the guests know about it and making it part of our guest management system, we managed to get a couple of guests to convert and to, and to take the leap and become members. And they never turn back. They really like, that's what their trigger point, for example. Then we created members only events. This is something we add as the third event. Our club has two meetings every month, our regular meetings. We add a third meeting and we turn it into a member only event. We create exclusivity, interest in a country where, where everybody has a different option for what doing every evening, creating a members only event makes something more interesting. And we notice that people really do come for this event where if you're not a guest, you have, to, you have to pay for something extra. What are these events? Can be anything, can be a keynote speaker, can be a voice coach as we did. We had a, a seminar from an improvisation coach, a theater coach. We had a Christmas special in Valletta. Uh, we had guest speakers. So you can come up with an idea. It can be a senior member of your club delivering a webinar or a, or a workshop on something specific. It can be anything. Because remember, we do have a lot of value as a Toastmasters to share. And we should be the first to appreciate this value and to share it with other people, to communicate it to the best of our ability. Tip number three, never talk price before value. At the beginning, when you go and check out something new, you don't know if it's for you, you don't know if you're gonna like it, but we are all the same. We have something in mind to know how much it costs. It's just like if you wonder about something, a car, a ticket for a theater, for an event, you always wonder how much it is, how much it costs. But if I tell you right up in front how much it is, how can you judge if the value, it is value for the money, if you don't know what you are actually buying into? So what we try to say, even to the guest, you are here for the first time, enjoy the event. We will talk after the event. First feel, it's free. Come again another time, it's free again. You will receive communication from us. They are all for free. Because we are telling you, we want you to evaluate first. And then we tell you, how much, how much it is, because then you can make your own, your own decision, not just based on something called like a number, because that is our, our uh, uh, brain just quickly finding a number. Hmm, I don't like this number. That's it. You stop thinking, you will never turn back. You will never return an email. You will never come back to the club because you satisfy your question. There's nothing else for your brain to be engaged. Tips number four, as the picture show, do not attempt ever to explain the entire world of Toastmasters to a first time guest in three minutes and 20 seconds, like you're doing an icebreaker with a guest. Forget, just be nice, be yourself. Authenticity engage, engages. Remember, it takes a lifetime to explain what Toastmaster is. If someone asks me what Toastmaster is about, I tell them, you know what? You need to discover it by yourself, come visit, Talk to people, see what it is. If you're asking me what it is, it's fantastic. I wish I had found it 10 years ago. I find it now. This for me is like, it's like a pension plan. I will be doing this for the rest of my life. It doesn't matter in what club, in what role. It's just because I enjoy the community. But this is my experience and it's not yours. So figure it out. Come, enjoy and see. 
as I said before, think like introducing someone to a party where a person doesn't know anyone. Tip number five, get an A team. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. This is not a one man show. As a VPM, you shall create a VPM team to support the guestership. Actually, the whole club shall support guestership. But what I mean by this, if as a VPM you cannot be present at all the meetings, make sure you have a team so someone else can go in your place. Someone who knows exactly how the system works so they can play the same tune, play the same song. So the experience for the guests, it's constant through the time. They receive a feeling that there is a system behind because that's what we like when we go into a new place. No matter who we speak with, we get the same feeling and that builds the solidity and the strength of a club. Where are we now? As Mateusz, our president, mentioned at the beginning in July 2019, our baseline was 22 members and three to two five guests per meeting. Right now, this is May 2020, our baseline is 28 members and we have nine plus guests per meeting. Although this is going a bit down lately because we are holding online meetings, which is more difficult for guests. And that has created, of course, a new challenge. The conversion data, before it took about 50 days on average for a first time guest to become a member. That, was, that would happen normally after three visits and up to 11 interaction, emails, some phone calls, some Facebook, back and forth. At the moment, our data show that when a guest comes for the first time, he become a member within 34 days on average, after two visits only, and after an average of seven interactions, which are actually the emails plus the first visit. So our conversion rate of guests visiting the club and becoming member, visiting the club at least twice and becoming member is up to 48%. The peak was at 41 members, and this was in March 2020, right just before the coronavirus crisis started in Malta. And the growth rate was doubled. 10 new members in the last three months period versus 10 new members in the previous six months periods. So yes, our goal, 60 members by, by summer, was achievable. We were on the right track to get up to that, which of course, did not happen, but we will come and comment on that. The system we built has a long-term impact. The, the guest members management system improves the club machine and the way the guest perceives the club. It is easy to transfer. It can be easily transferred to the next VPM and so on. And it is nimble. It's designed to be flexible, open to changes. If times changes, we will change the system. At the moment, we're not charging anyone for online visit because the online environment is very different. different. People don't expect to have to pay for online at the moment. So therefore, we are welcoming everyone. We're not asking them to do a small donation as we do for our live meeting because times have changed. We have to react to that. The club, now, as I said, everything is nice and sweet and pink, but what about the impact of coronavirus? Our club went 100% online. We didn't miss a beat. We didn't miss a meeting. We just moved within seven days from our last live meeting to our first online meeting. The growth year over year is actually of 40% because even if we don't get any new members before summer, we are already 28 and we started at 22. This is a 40% growth. This was one of the tools that brought us to be uh, elected as President Distinguished Club Award, nine out of 10 points. Actually, we cannot get 10 out of 10 points because we are not districted yet. I think I managed to do it in 25 minutes. Please, Zoom Master, tell me if I'm correct. Uh, yes, well, yes, 22 minutes I have it on my agenda. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Yes, that's what I was getting here on mine as well. Very good. So I rest my case here. I don't want to bother you with uh, more uh, slides. I'm gonna uh, stop share this for a few seconds. So I'm back live. Um, I hope the presentation is clear. As I'd say, we will pack this down into a PDF 
after I will, I will share my email address. So whoever sent me their information, we will send to them the PDF and we will circulate it through the district leadership. Uh, some of the leaders are here connected with us, so I will share the, the presentation for them as well. Very good. Yes, thank you very much, Marco, for your presentation. Um, you, we have many questions already coming up in the chat, but I would like you to ask you the question, what kind of seven touching points have you created in your presentation? So, because you had uh, seven touching points, yeah. I mean, you, you mentioned the first one, the visit, but what hap what's happening after that? So could you please explain that a little bit more? Ah, okay, very good, very good. Well, the, um, uh, the seven touches, the first touch we said is the first meeting. So that's when the, when the guest makes an effort. He commits the time to come to a meeting. That's our first touch. After that, the second one is within 24 hours is a thank you note where we say thank you for your time. We'll be following up with more emails. We hope you enjoy the meeting. We create a format. We change this format several times. I can share with you the format of the emails. This comes with a nice format with the logo. There is all the, all the link to our Facebook, to our Instagram if people want to tell. And we always ask a question. What do you like about the meeting? And then we see if the guest replies or not. If he replies, that goes on a one-to-one -one conversation. If he doesn't reply, that, that after four days, we'll go to the next touch, which is another email, when we focus on another aspect of those masters. And this continue until, for example, the, the point number five, so the fifth communication, it's an email that is in coincidence with the next meeting. So we tell to the guest, hey, there is another chance for you to come again. Tonight, there is another event and we give the information about the event. That's how it works. When it goes all the end to the end, the last is a thank you note where we say it wasn't meant, but we thank you for your time and maybe in the future we'll be again together. Or there is always a link to, hey, wait, I changed my mind. I want more information. When this happens, so we finish this, we keep this in a database and normally we don't want to bother and pester the people with many communication, but after sometime like three to four months, we put them again through another cycle of information. Like now we are informing members from last year, uh, sorry, guests from last year that did not become members about that we are online. Maybe they are stuck at home. They cannot travel. They cannot go out. They might be interested in refreshing their public speaking skills or just meeting our community again because it was a nice memory. They liked it. They forgot. They were busy. Now they have time. And we actually have shown that this system repeats again, it's automatic because we already have the database. And again, if the people don't like it, they receive one email, they can unsubscribe and we'll never bother them again. I hope this answers your questions. Yes, thank, thank you, Marco. And now I would like to welcome as well our Yolanta, Yolanta who is gonna manage the questions from the room. Yolanta. Hi, thank you, Matt. Thank you, Marco. Very nice presentation. We have some uh, questions from, from the audience. The yes. first one coming from Vasiliki from Athens Club. Why is 60 a good member, uh, a good number of, of members for the club? Isn't it a bit too much if you want the members to have a speech opportunity? Thank you. That's, that's a very good question. Uh, it was a vision. Uh, we wanted to put the number very high because, as I said, one of our, our goal as committee was also to become districted. So we wanted to build and we know that the dropout rate in our club is extremely high. So 60 was the number we thought that will bring us to a solid base of between 25 and 35 members who are committed long term to stay with the club. And this is actually showing into the numbers because we managed to get up to 41 to retain 28. At the moment, these 28 members are very much engaged. They understand what the club is about. They participate, but it is true. Once we started going over 30, we had a challenge and we had to actually increase the number of speeches from three to four to five per session and to add the third session. That when it's not uh, a member only event, or sometimes it is, but it is a, a speaking event. Because yes, it's true. It gives a, a challenge to the VPE. In fact, the VP of Education was involved from the beginning in our plan because uh, she had to be uh, ready for taking the challenge. Yes, it, it is true. It was a challenge. Okay, thank you very much. I hope, uh, I hope we answered uh, Vasiliki's um, question. Let me, let me jump into another one. Thorsten, 
Fantastic presentation so far. How exactly have you been using MailChimp? To me, it's simply a tool to send out newsletters, so I'm not sure in how far is it advantageous over an email template. Thank you uh, for the question. Uh, it, it, it sounds like that. And in fact, in the free version, now I'm just going into this, but most of the software are the same. So whatever I say for MailChimp works in most of the software. Uh, what it happens with the, the, the paid for subscription, which we're using, is that you can actually create a number of emails in the future all at once. So basically you don't have to repeat and putting emails uh, and putting names and adding emails manually or using some, some bridging with Gmails. Because with MailChimp, you just load in the database, you confirm that they agree on the GDPR, and that MailChimp, use the template, you just put the name, it makes automatic to take the name of the person and put it into the body of the email. So when a person receives the email, it's not a BCC, it's not an email like generic, but it's personalized for him. And this can be planned in about 20 minutes after each event uh, for the next seven emails. So that's what is the advantage of using MailChimp, to make it automatic and to reduce the load. To be honest with, uh, with you audience, uh, in January and February, we were having 14, 15 guests. That meant if I had to use Gmail, I, have to, I would have to create all these emails. And plus, if someone doesn't like to receive this Gmail, they, they don't have an, a, a direct way, a direct system to just unsubscribe. And this becomes a problem because somebody just, just flag us as, as, a, as a spam. And then we have a problem with our Gmail. That's why we're using, we're using MailChimp or a similar system instead of just an email uh, tool. Thank you, Marco. I can see that Thorsten showed us some up. So okay. thanks for the question. I like that. I feel like back in school. Sorry. Please. Next question came from Iris. I'll be interested to know more about the choice of charging five euro per meeting. If the club runs about 25 meetings per year, the price is about the same, paying five euros each time instead of becoming a member. Do you have experience with members coming for three, four months paying five euros each time? Uh, very good questions. In fact, the number is relatively small and it's really, it's really just more of sort of like a donation. But we realize that if someone comes as a guest for many times, it's actually a bit of, uh, a bit of limit, limiting because they understand that first of all, they cannot take roles, they cannot prepare speeches. So the idea is really about a guest should be someone that comes a couple of times, two, three times to understand what the club is about. But then we want to have people that commit to the club. Because as I said, Monte is a place where you have a lot of tourists, a lot of people comes and goes. It's kind of disrupted for the atmosphere if we end up having too many guests that keeps on coming for a number of times because they cannot contribute even for them. They just get bored because they don't understand what's behind Toastmasters. So by telling them just the fact that, hey, you know, if you're coming again, you should be considering that this is the rule. They actually take the decision. So it's more of an incentive to take a decision or even more to think about what you're doing. Because we tell the guest, your time is very precious. You can do other things at this time. So if you're coming to us to share the time with us, we want you to get the best experience out of it, but we also expect you to engage with us. And if you don't become a member, if you don't become part of the community, it's very difficult. So we never experience anyone coming for more than two, three times, actually, before deciding if it was for them or not. But as I said, this might be very specific for the Maltese environment. It might be different in other countries. This is what we experience. Very good. I, I answered the question. Thank you very much, Marco. Thank you, Iris, for your question. Next question came again from uh, Vasiliki. Have you investigated why the dropout is so big? Yes, good question. Well, as I said, we did a bit of investigation just by talking with people. Uh, one of the reasons it is that, as I said, we are a country with a very big number of uh, foreigners and many comes from abroad for a work assignment here. Sometimes they get, uh, uh, they leave after six months or a year. Sometimes they come to study in Malta and then they leave again. So it's almost natural. The second thing is that sometimes people decide to join for six months or for a year as a, as a member, and then they realize it's not for them. They cannot keep up with pathways. They get disengaged, they don't like it. And so this is quite something we came to accept because as I said, it's not 
is part of the nature of a place with a very high mobility and a very diverse community. Uh, and that also explains why we are the only club actually at the moment. We really have to promote what it is about because there is really not enough awareness. You know, I, I even talk with members after six, seven months, they finally realize how big pathways is and what kind of e-learning opportunity it is. And then they get engaged again. So it's really a big effort from the club to really present all the options that there are. I hope I answered the question. Thank you very much, Marco. Since you started talking about, about the engagement of, of members, we have another question from Helena. How you increase the new members' dedication? Sorry, I lost the last few words. What did you say? How you increase the new members' dedication? Yes, very good. Another thing that we, we are aware is that um, uh, pathways, for instance, it's not easy to grasp. You need to get used to the system, to understand the philosophy behind the system, how it works. So what we do, we create a, a number of options, opportunities for new members especially, to get like an onboarding uh, system. Over the course of the first three months, we offer them a webinar to see how to register on EasySpeak and on selecting pathways and how pathways works. And we work together, specifically the VPE and the president, to give target goal achievable for the new member, say, try to do your icebreaker within a month or within six weeks or within eight weeks. We are sort of doing mentoring, which is really actually one of the big, big part, one of the big part of Toastmasters. And we are just doing it as a club effort, you know. And in fact, in the future, as more members progress into pathways after I think is level two, you can actually become a mentor. We are trying to actually implement a system where a senior member become a mentor for the new member. So we try to make sure that after a member becomes a member, doesn't just get there and doesn't know what to do next. We want to keep on helping them, helping them to get into the mood of the club. Again, I hope I, hope I answer the question. Elena, did you answer it? I see a thumb up, so I guess we did. Yes. In the chat. I would like to add one, uh, I mean, because I was doing the online webinars yes, with, uh, please, for the Matt, new members. Yeah. Yes, I would like to add something, Helena, to what Marco just said. Basically, uh, this year we already did eight online webinars. And actually, I, when we have every month at the Bay, every first Tuesday of the month or Monday of the month, we are having an online webinar for all the new guests, new members, and also every member who has a problem with Pathways or Easy Speak. So we can join again, ask these digital questions, and we are resolving them immediately. I mean, from my experience, uh, because I started to do them, these uh, this webinars and workshops online, uh, once a member, a new member, participated in one of my webinar, they never came back to the VP asking them questions about Pathways, for example. You know, because they understood exactly where to click, how to select a path, how to submit a path, how to, uh, where to find information, presentation later on to, uh, to check it again when I'm ready with one level and then how to continue with another level. And, and what we did as well, actually, when I was explaining the easy speak and how to book a speech on easy speak, very often, actually 80% of time, we were already booking an icebreaker for them in the next two, three months. Yep. And they were always happy. Ah, oh, yes, in two, three months, yes, I can do it. Definitely, I have time to prepare. And they were all super happy. And everyone really committed to do the icebreaker. No one said, no, I won't do it. Yep. So we were a little bit pushing here in this direction, but they were actually very happy that someone's holding their hands and making the first effort to them to, to make an icebreaker with them. Because they knew it as well, that the waiting time was becoming longer, for example, one month for a speech, right? So they were like, oh, oh so I have to wait one month. Okay, so I have to book in advance. So we were triggering a bit more the commitment of them and the engagement from the beginning on. Ah, yes, so that's it for my part. Yeah, yeah very good, Matt. Very well said. Exactly. Uh, I believe it's about planning and planning your agenda, your schedule. If you are serious about, you know, your journey with those masters, you need to plan. You cannot expect to just book a, a, a speech at the last minute. And Pathways does take a bit of time to learn, to understand. But it is true. I tried my first webinar with one of our members uh, last week, and he also did book the, <laughs> the icebreaker right away for the end of June, because it's all booked until then. So, uh, you know, that's how it is. Yeah. Is there any more questions, uh, Yolanta or Matt? Or I, have, I have one more um, coming Thanks. from others again. 
sometimes people have businesses that could benefit also from using MailChimp. Is it possible to use the same account from MailChimp and a different business? That way a club can start for free using it, the business account of a member? Mm -hmm. uh, that I would have to verify because, uh, well, maybe Matt knows because yes, we have been, f yes. yeah, please Matt, you can answer this one, go ahead. Well, I can answer this question because I also was uh, getting into MailChimp Basically, MailChimp uh, has different kind of uh, models, like subscription models or payment models. And we have chosen the first paid option that you can have, which allows us to create free groups, free audiences, we call it. And in our club, we have one audience, which is called prospect guests, meaning people who clicked on Facebook, I'm attending, but I haven't been yet in our real meeting, or people who are just seeing us on Eventbrite, for example, and attending, but they never come to our meeting. Then the second group is Marco's group that we have. Oh, we're going to do it like this. Second group. <laughs> <laughs> the second group is the, all the guests who has visited our club. So they went to the first live meeting and that's where Marco is actually taking over. Right. And then we have the third audience being the third group, which is the VPE group. So every member, for example, if you, before he was like a prospect guest, becomes a real guest with Marco. Then he, from the real guest, he becomes a real member. He, the VPE takes over and he, the VPE also has some major campaigns helping them to onboard them. For example, we have a tag called, now you are a member. The member gets automatically to, at the moment, two emails, welcoming him to the club, explaining you who the committee is, where he can find uh, our Wikipedia, like a Toastmasters Malta Wikipedia on Trello. And then as well, uh, two months later, uh, two weeks later, he gets uh, another appointment, how to book a speech, for example, and how to welcome guests as well in a club, the, the video that Marco presented. So, and this is scalable and it's, it's run automatically. Meaning if you have a business, right? And you have in the first account, you have the one group, one audience for your business. And yes, you can create a second audience for Toastmasters if you would like to, right? But then it will be limited. So you have only one third left which you can use for everything what you do like, or even for a second club. Yeah. The, pro the problem that you have here is that you, at the moment with our subscription model, we have only three accounts, three person can use it. So there's another limitation that uh, Belgium is giving you with the cheapest model that they're offering. Exactly. But if you go higher, you can have more options. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay, Very you. good, thank you, Matt. Is thank there more you. questions? Uh, on the chat, there are no questions. Maybe uh, if you raise your hand or, or show a thumb up if you have a question. Okay. Um, okay, I have. There is one more question from Please. Frank. What do you pay per month for your MailChimp price model, and what is the reaction of the target audience? Email seen, email opened, links clicked in between. Do you adapt your email campaign accordingly? Uh, good question. Yes, we uh, with Mailchimp you have the option to see who is opening, who is opening, what is clicking on when they are opening the time. You can even decide the time of the day when to send the email, the day, all these kind of things. Yes, so it's a lot of information that has been helping already to change the body, the content of the email when we send the emails, and also uh, the price is about these are public things around ten dollars or ten euros, something like that per month. That's the price of the first package, something like that. There are sometimes there are offers, I think at the time they offer, but again, all the systems are similar and they are going up in price depending on how many audiences, how many group of uh, contacts you want to run separately. So, but again, as I said, we are not promoting MailChimp, it's just one of the tool, uh, but you can pick another one, there are, there are many. There are CRA, CRM who do the same, CRM software. So it's really up to your unique case what you want to do and how much time you have to do it. Um, I'm just going to go back to this and sharing this screen. Um, if there is no more questions, right? I will just, oh, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm going the wrong way, sorry. I just want to thank the District 109 leadership, uh, Frank, Ayres and Lorenzo for organizing this webinar and Mateus and Yolanta for supporting me tonight. These are the link uh, to my, these are my contacts. If you want further information, as I said, you can drop me an email and we can send you the PDF with the information. If you have more questions, 
We can also answer through the emails. Um, as I said, there is a lot more behind all the details of how we write the emails and things like that. This we can all share, it's not, it's not a problem. I think from my part, unless Yolanta, you have more questions, I think I'm done. We, we, right, you have more questions? At the moment, no. No, okay. Is there anyone that would like to ask a question, maybe? No, okay. Not, 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 not a question, uh, Marco. Yeah, I want to thank you as well that you have um, given us the time to explain how Toastmasters Malta became so successful and what you do with the uh, guestership concept. Which I never heard that word before, but seems. No, to be I came up with concept. it. Sorry, that's <laughs> fine. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, on the behalf of District One Hundred Nine and Iris, I think you you second that one for me as well. Yes, thanks for that. And yeah, Iris, as the outgoing club growth director, you want to have some last words here as well. Yes, uh, this was really great. Uh, when I met Marco and he showed this uh, methodology to me, I was immediately fascinated. Uh, I think that this is really a best practice and uh, the more clubs know how to do this, uh, the better. And thank you so much to Marco and to Matt for uh, organizing this and for coming up with this, with this method. It was really good, a uh, really good webinar. Thank you for this. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Iris. For my part, again, I thank Yolanta for her support tonight with the q and I give the the stage back to our Zoom master to close the event. Matt, stage is yours.